The 21st century does continue to be full of astounding scientific discoveries in many fields and disciplines. This is, of course, fantastic news, but as we mentioned in our previous video, there are sometimes so many announcements and publications that the general public simply can't keep track of them, oftentimes because they get buried under other world news or just aren't catchy enough to make the headlines. And so today, we're going to bring you five more fascinating scientific discoveries from recent years that might have slipped under your radar. One thing that hopefully most of us can agree on is the fact that the Earth is round. Not everybody, but those people are idiots. What you might not know is that it isn't technically a sphere, though, as it gets uh, just a bit wider near the equator, meaning its true shape is actually called an ellipsoid. The shape change isn't all that dramatic, though, certainly not something you'd notice on a photograph. And in the same way that the Earth's shape is relatively uniform, so is its distribution of mass. Yes, there are mountains, canyons, valleys, you name it. And from our perspective, the surface might look rather bumpy, but because of the sheer size of the planet, it's actually overall pretty smooth. Neil deGrasse Tyson once claimed that relative to its size, it was even smoother than a cue ball. But this doesn't tell the full story. It may look visually smooth, but the force of gravity is exerted at slightly different strengths around the globe, based on slightly varying densities of materials underneath our feet. A map of these gravitational highs and lows is known as a global geoid, and we're constantly refining our geoid models with new and improved data. The weirdest gravitational anomaly can be found in the Indian Ocean. First discovered in 1948 by a Dutch geophysicist, there is a significant low point on the geoid, with a large portion of the ocean actually resting about 100 meters below the average sea level. Long dubbed a gravity hole, this peculiar spot has been known about for years, but its cause has eluded scientists. Until now, in the summer of 2023, researchers at the Indian Institute of Science published their study investigating this strange location using advanced computer simulated models of the geological history going back about 140 million years. The team ran 19 simulations, each varying by the tectonic activity, composites of the crust, behavior of the magma in the mantle, and much more. Six of these simulations resulted in the gravitational anomaly seen today. And what all six of these had in common was the creation of large magma plumes underneath the region, created by the disappearance of an ancient ocean which was removed from the map when the Indian subcontinent smashed into Asia. They posit that as the oceanic plate was pushed down into the mantle. It affected the composition and density of the magma, creating these plumes. The researchers do make sure to point out, though, that we've yet to find evidence for these plumes outside of the computer simulation, as more work is needed in the area, and they're open to the idea that some other currently unknown force is at hand, waiting to be discovered. But it does sound very promising, and if confirmed, would mean we've finally solved a little mystery of our planet's interior. And speaking of the planet's interior, another fascinating discovery from recent years suggests that there may be large deposits of water deep within the mantle. So the mantle is the largest layer of the Earth, coming in at 1,800 miles or 2,900 kilometers thick, and it's filled with rock and magma, and it comprises as much as 84% of the Earth's entire mass. So how would vast reservoirs of water make their way so deep into the Earth? Well, it's long been speculated that there might be some amount of water down there in a place called the transition zone, located between the upper and the lower mantle, and the first evidence of this is actually just recently been found. Two professors of geophysicists, one from the University of New Mexico and the other from Northwestern University, have used seismic waves generated from earthquakes to study this deep part of the Earth, and their analyses have found signs of huge amounts of water. And when I say huge there, I really do mean it. According to the researchers, if just 1% of the weight of the mantle's transition zone was water, it would equate to three times as much H2O as all of the world's oceans combined. But what's odd is that most of this isn't water in the way that we know it. It's not in the simple form of liquid, solid, or gas that we're accustomed to on the surface. This is because the conditions created by the inconceivable pressure this deep within the Earth do not allow for a simple underground lake like you'd see closer to the surface. Instead, the water is pressed into what's known as a hydroxyl radical, allowing it to bind with the mineral that surrounds it. And this form of trapped water has actually been found before when a volcano in Brazil blasted a diamond to the surface 
Within the diamond, researchers found a mineral called ringwoodite, and bound to this mineral was a surprising amount of water. One of the professors, Jacobson, says that ringwoodite is special because it acts like a sponge soaking up the H2O. To quote him, there is something very special about the crystal structure of ringwoodite that allows it to attract hydrogen and trap water. This mineral can contain a lot of water under conditions of the deep mantle. Now, they believe that much of this water is stored at depths of about 400 miles or 640 kilometers. A more recent analysis indicates that it may be more mobile than previously thought, perhaps even able to travel to the crust. This might mean that the water cycle includes deep stores beneath the surface, perhaps replenishing the oceans up above. It shows that there's a lot more to our home planet than meets the eye, and there's likely even more discoveries waiting for us right underneath our feet. Now, for many years, it has been believed that the blue whale was the largest animal to have ever lived on Earth, its size and weight even surpassing the largest of the dinosaurs. And truly, the blue whale is really big. Its tongue alone weighs up to four tons, which is about the same weight as a female African elephant. And the longest blue whale ever recorded was a staggering 110 feet or 33 meters, which makes it all the more shocking that researchers found fossils of an animal that may have been even larger. Paleontologists excavating the Inga Valley, located in southern Peru, found several massive bones indicative of a much larger ancient whale. Recovered fossils included a hip bone, ribs, and more than a dozen vertebrae, all of which were absolutely massive and dated to around 40 million years ago. The team named the new creature Perusitus colossus, and using other whale species for comparison, they estimate that this whale's maximum weight would have been around 350 tons, which is 150 tons heavier than the heaviest blue whale ever recorded. Its bones were heavier and denser than its modern counterparts, confirming that it lived its life entirely in the water. Might sound funny to confirm that a whale lived only in the water, but things were really rather different 40 million years ago, and many other species of early whales still had the ability to crawl out onto land for short periods of time, but Perusitus colossus was simply too heavy for these types of activities. We're missing a few key details here, though. Notably, a matching skull has not been found, so we can only guess what its diet might have consisted of. It could have been fish, krill, we simply don't know. What's groundbreaking about this discovery is not just the fact that the animal kingdom may have a new king on the scale, but that the existence of Perusetus colossus upends our current model of whale evolution. It was previously thought that these gentle giants of the sea only evolved to reach their huge size in recent history, but the size and age of this new discovery might mean that their peak weight was achieved many millions of years ago. The finds also reminds us that there are plenty of ancient creatures that we've yet to discover. In 2018, researchers from the Institute of Agrochemistry and Soil Science in Russia gathered hundreds of specimens from two species of roundworms frozen in the Siberian permafrost. These millimeter-long worms were taken back to the lab, and astoundingly, two of them were revived. After the worms had been thawed and rehydrated, they were brought back to life with their metabolic processes miraculously resuming as if they'd just been taking a nap. Plant material within the sample was radiocarbon dated, and it was found that the worms had been frozen for more than 45,000 years. Somehow, these worms were able to freeze their metabolism since before the dawn of civilization and resume it once they'd been thawed. It was also found that one of the species of worm was not a known species, but in fact something entirely new. It's insane to think that when these worms were first born and began their lives, woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers roamed the earth, and the last of the Neanderthals were still walking around. As for exactly how they managed to lie dormant for so long, it's not exactly clear. Previous studies into this type of long-term hibernation, called cryptobiosis, has only found creatures that could put a pause on life for a few decades at most, whereas with this worm there doesn't seem to be a time limit on the process. As long as the worms don't endure some sort of damage while they're powered down, who knows how long they could remain in this state and still be brought back to life. The team has found some similarities with these and other modern species, such as the fact that they both utilize a sugar called trellos. But suffice to say, the implications of reviving a 45,000-year-old worm cannot be overstated. As said by one of the researchers on the team, the major take-home message or summary of this discovery is that it is, in principle, possible to stop life for more or less an indefinite amount of time and restart it.
As interesting as they may be, the discoveries that we've mentioned thus far can be the subject of debate by the general public. There are many skeptics who criticize spending money on research that doesn't directly benefit us right now, and they believe that this money is better spent elsewhere. And while we certainly counter this with the many inventions stemming from research that took decades for its true potential to show, such as superconductors, there is no doubt that the last findings today will only benefit humanity, but they may even have the potential to change the world as we know it. Fusion is a source of power that has long been been considered the holy grail of clean energy. Not only would it theoretically produce zero carbon emissions, it would also require next to zero natural resources. Unfortunately, achieving this ideal has eluded researchers for decades, and there has been a long sense of public pessimism, with countless articles over the last decade arguing over whether or not it's time to finally give up the pipe dream, as fusion reactions in the lab have always required more energy input than they put out. But in just the last year or so, everything changed. In December 2022, scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab in California achieved for the first time in history a net energy gain in a fusion reaction. The breakthrough came during an experiment in which the team focused lasers onto the target fuel, which fused two of the atoms into a heavier one, releasing energy in the process. Specifically, the laser delivered 2.05 megajoules of energy to the atoms, and the reaction created 3.15 megajoules of energy. On the 30th of July 2023, the experiment was repeated and confirmed confirmed, but this time reportedly produced an even higher energy yield. This is pretty incredible news, and it represents decades of hard work in a field that offered no guarantees, but it is still a very long way from replacing fossil fuels. In order for this type of reaction to be used commercially in the future, components will need to find a way to scale up and to keep the fusion reaction sustained. This was just a single ignition on a single fuel cell, and a lot more research is needed to figure out the next step to increasing this. Perhaps put best by an executive from the Electric Power Research Institute who said, it's the first step that says, yes, this is not just fantasy, this can be done in theory. So keep your eyes peeled for future breakthroughs in fusion technology, because if these scientists continue to make progress, it has the potential to solve global problems with energy production, climate change, and a whole lot more.